Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you here today on what the world needs is Jesus. And we trust that, trust that you're having a good day today. And, I, and, I, and you know what? We got to have Jesus if we're going to go to heaven. I'm glad today to know that I'm a born again child of the living God because I am on my way to heaven. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And I'm glad today. Amen. That, and if you can't say that you're a born-again child of God, I trust that you'll find you an altar today somewhere, somehow, and you'll call upon the name of the Lord oh, Jesus yeah. Christ and get Jesus Lord, in your heart. Friend, we got to have Jesus. That's the name of this broadcast, and I'm so glad that we, got, that, that we named it that because, friend, you cannot go to heaven without Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. And he said, no man coming to the Father but by me. It's going to take the Lord Jesus Christ, friend, if you're going to make it to heaven. If you'd like to find us on the web, you can find us on Facebook.com. What the world needs is Jesus. Also on YouTube, you can find us at, go to, you, go to W-O-L-W's playlist. On YouTube, go to W-O-L-W's playlist and look for what the world needs is Jesus and you can find us there. Also, you can find us on Twitter, twitter.com, World with Jesus. And also, if uh, you'd like to give us an email, you can shoot us an email at worldwithjesus at gmail.com. Friend, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, don't wait till this program's over. Don't wait till it's all over. You know what? We're not promised the next minute. Friend, we never know when something's going to happen just like that right there. You better know you're right with God because you got to get, you got to go to heaven by the way of the cross. Amen. We, we all got to go the same way. Can't nobody else. I know that there's some folks out there saying, oh, oh, you can go this way or you can do that or you can do it that way. But friend, you cannot go any other way, but you got to go through the way of the cross. Amen. You got to go just like I went. You got to kneel on them knees and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into that heart because it's going to take Jesus. Friend, I want I want you to worship with Brother Ricky now as he comes around and gives us the word. Brother Rick. Yeah, praise God. Hey, man, thank you, Brother Ronnie. I'd just like to say I love the Lord this morning. I know I say that every week, but I love him every week. Glory to God. I'm, I'm here for him. I'm here to stand up and say I love the Lord today, and I hope you do too, glory to God. And if you don't, if you don't, get Jesus in your heart, amen. And watch your life change. When you get Jesus in your heart, watch your life start to change, amen. I love the Lord today, and, and I hope you do too, and I hope you're saved, and if you're not, I hope you get that away. Glory to God. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope, glory to God, a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, amen. That word lively right there is lively, glory yes, to God. That means he's not dead. Lively hope, glory to God. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, received in heaven, uh, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time, amen. Amen. Lord God, Peter was on. Peter was an apostle of, of Jesus, Amen. And he was writing, he was writing this letter to the to the body of Christians, the Jews, the Gentiles, yes. to the churches that uh, some of them had been founded by Paul, Amen. To encourage and strengthen on, the Lord. brethren, Amen. <laughs> Jesus told Peter in Luke twenty two and thirty two, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, Amen. And, and right. if, if Satan gets a hold of your faith, uh -oh. if he robs you of that faith, amen, you've lost it all, Come amen. So, uh -oh. so, so, so don't let the faith go, amen. You've got to keep faith, glory to God. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren, amen. Strengthen thy brethren yeah. with our own testimonies, yeah. amen. Strengthen him with that. That's what we have to do for me and you, amen. We have to, we have to help each other and strengthen and encourage each other, amen, in God's hands. Everybody needs to be strengthened. Yes. Amen, everybody yes. does. No matter how strong you are, how smart you are, how spiritual you are, or how big you are, <laughs> it don't matter, amen. We all need help and we all need amen. strength, yes. amen. Sometimes we just need somebody to pray for us, glory to God. Sometimes we just need somebody to, to sit down and pray for yes. us. Come on. Sometimes Come on. we need spiritual help, amen. Sometimes, sometimes we just need somebody to come by and visit us, amen, and talk to us. 
Amen. Just come and visit us and sit down and talk to us. Amen. That's how we strengthen each other in the Lord. Amen. Now David needed Jonathan in 1 Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 23, Saul is trying to kill David. Amen. David's going from place to place to get away from Saul because Saul's trying to kill him. Saul thinks David's trying to take over his kingdom. Amen. Saul thinks David's trying to take his throne over. Amen. And he's trying to kill him. But now Jonathan loves David, amen, and he hears in the wilderness, he, he hears that, that uh, David is in the wilderness, and he goes and strengthens his hand in God, amen. Verse 16 says, and Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God, amen. Sometimes we just need, to, we just need somebody to help us, amen. Sometimes we just need somebody to strengthen us, amen. Now, David was a man after God's own heart. Amen. David was a man after God's own heart, a great warrior, and he loved God. But in verse 16, Jonathan went and stre uh, strengthened his hand in God. That's yeah. what it tells us in verse 16. Sometimes God uses us to strengthen somebody, a man that's far above us. Amen. You might think, well, you know, they're way up here and I'm way down here, and I couldn't ever say nothing to help them. But God uses us to strengthen them that's above us sometimes. Amen? He will, glory to God. And you might, sometimes you, you might strengthen somebody and not even know it, glory Amen. to God. You might say something to somebody and not even know that you're helping them out. And you might be helping them out. God's ways is so much higher than ours. Amen? God's, God's ways are so much higher than ours. And we may not have any idea what's going on in somebody's life. And we can say something and, and it helped their situation. Amen. You know, just follow God and, and, it, and you might help somebody's situation. Yeah, Amen. God. God knows all things. Amen. Yeah, with man, things are impossible. But with God, all things are yes, possible. Sir. Amen. Yeah. First Peter 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Woo. Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy... Yeah, yeah which according to his abundant mercy hath, be, hath, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. There's that word lively, amen. It's not dead, it's a lively hope, glory to God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, that's, that's a strong statement, glory to God. If you don't know what the resurrection is, I'm fixing to tell you, glory to God. Jesus, Jesus was beat, glory to God. He was spit on. He was whipped. Amen. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Glory to God. He, he carried his own cross up Calvary's Hill. Amen. Now, we need to think about that a minute. He carried his own cross up Calvary's Hill. Amen. And let me tell you, let me tell you what he done. Amen. Instead of, instead of, now, where we'd all be, would we'd be trying to figure out how to get these people back. Amen. Yeah. That's what we'd be doing. Amen. Yeah. We'd be trying to figure out how to get these people back. But Jesus, now listen to what Jesus is doing. He's asking God to forgive them. Amen. They're whipping him and beating him as he carries his cross up the hill. And he asks God to forgive them. He said, he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Wow. Glory to God. Can we be like that today? Amen. Can we be like that today? That's a, that's a perfect example of the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the kind of love we all need in our hearts today. Amen. To get that love in your heart, glory to God. We have to get Jesus right there. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus died on the cross. Amen. And he was buried in a tomb for three days. Amen. For three days. And three days later, the great power of God. Amen. The great power of God raised him from the dead. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15 and 19, Paul said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ. Amen. That's in this life only. Amen. That, that means in this life only we have hope in Christ. Amen. And we don't have hope in the life to come. Amen. Amen. We would be, it, it says we are of all men most miserable. Amen. So we want to we have hope in the next life too, glory to God. Because it, it don't stop right here. When we die right here on this earth, it don't stop right there. You think it might stop when you die, you're done. You go one place or the other. You go to heaven or hell. Amen. Yep. And if you're not saved, you're not going to heaven, glory to God. So you need to be saved. You need to get Jesus in your life, amen. Jesus is not dead. He's alive. He's well. He's right here in this studio with us today, glory to God. I feel, I feel the presence of God right here, amen. 
Glory to God. He's right here with us. He's the reason we can have that eternal life I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. You got to have Jesus in your heart. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. God created Adam. Amen. And when he disobeyed God, that brought sin and death into the world. Amen. In the beginning, the world was the world was a perfect place. The world was a perfect place to be until Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge. Amen. God told them, "Don't you can eat from anything in the garden you want to, except that one tree." But they had to eat from that tree. The old devil got in there and got them sidetracked. Glory to God, and they had to eat. Amen. Sin by man came death, which was Adam. Also by man came the resurrection of death, amen, which is Jesus Christ, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus said, I'll go with you even unto the end of the world, amen. He'll go with us all the way to the end of the world, and then he'll also go with us on into the world to come, amen. So that what a promise that is, glory to God. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again. Unto a lively, lively hope. I just want to stress that's a that's a lively hope. That's a that, that hope is alive. Glory yes. to God. It's alive. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. Amen. When when we think of inheritance, sometimes in this world you think of inheritance as you, you're going to inherit a car or you're going to inherit property. Or you're going to inherit money or something. When somebody dies, you inherit this, you inherit that. But, but God's not talking about that kind of inheritance. Amen. He's not talking about that. Amen. He's talking about the saints of God are going to inherit the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Amen. And it's free of charge. Glory to God. It don't cost you a thing. Amen. It don't cost you nothing. All you have to do is ask for it. Amen. Is that not wonderful? Is that not great? I just love that today, amen. It's free of charge, amen. You, you don't have to pay anything. Amen, you say something's free in this world, everybody's listening. What? Did you say something was free? Everybody's listening, amen. So if, you're, so if you're not saved today, you need to be checking this out, amen. You need to check it out because it's free, amen. Even if you are saved, you still need to check it out, glory to God. You, you, you're missing out on your inheritance, Amen. Glory to God. We have an inheritance that's incorruptible and undefiled. Amen. An inheritance, nothing can touch it. The devil can't touch it. Nobody on this earth can touch it. Time can't do nothing to it. It's an inheritance. It's an inheritance without spot or blemish. Amen. And it's reserved in heaven for you and me. It's reserved there. Amen. John 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Glory to God. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Amen. And receive you unto myself. That there I am, there ye may be also. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Jesus had just told Peter, glory to God, that he was going to deny him three times, amen. And, and Jesus still tells him right after that, let not your heart be troubled, amen. Jesus is telling us, I know what you're doing. I know what you're going through. I know what's happening. But let not your heart be troubled, amen. Don't let it be troubled. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Amen. I will come again. Not maybe. Not possibly. Not if I can. Not if I've got time. Amen. He said, I will come again. Glory to God. He will come again. And that's when Jesus tells you something, when it says that in red writing in the Bible, count on it. Take it to the bank, glory to God, because if Jesus says it, that's the way it is, glory to God. He will come again and receive us unto his self. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, glory to God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Here comes Jesus to get us, glory to God. Here he was right over here. Here he was in John 14 saying, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah, Amen. And, and, and he said, I will come again. 
And right here he is, amen. Right here he is. He will come again. He's coming after us. Then, ye, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. That tells us right there he's coming to get us, glory to God. We've we got to be ready, amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, amen. We have to be ready for, for, for Jesus when he comes back. He, 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 he don't tell us when he's coming back. He said we'll know it. We'll know that he's even at the door, but he don't tell us when. Amen. Hey man, if anybody tells you they know when he's coming back, don't listen to them, glory to God, because they're, they're not telling you the truth. Because no man knows, amen. No man knows. Right. So we got to be ready all the time, amen. We got to get Jesus in our hearts. We got to try to live our lives all the time ready, amen. Come on, so when he steps out on that cloud, yes. we'll meet Jesus, glory to God. We have a place reserved in heaven just for us, amen. An inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and it won't ever fade away, amen. What a promise that is to us, amen. That's a promise from Jesus to us, glory to God. We're, we're, kept, by, we're kept by the power of God through the faith unto salvation, amen. amen. If you don't know the Lord today, I urge you, please find you an altar somewhere. Get on your knees and ask Jesus in your heart. Just cry out to God, amen, and he'll be there to answer for you, amen. Glory to God. I appreciate you today and worship with Paula and New Creation as they sing a song. Amen. So aimless, life filled with sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more in darkness, no more night I'm so happy, no sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light Just like a blind man, I wandered along Worries and fears I Straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow. Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, thank you, Paula, a new creation. Boy, I'm telling you what, Brother Ricky, you've got me fired up now. That word I ain't nothing like the word of God. They ain't nothing like good praise and worship. Gospel music will just set your day. You understand what I'm talking about? 
When you get up, get you some gospel music on, get in the word, and set your day, set your tone for the day by the word. You understand it's that word that will set your day. It's that word that will direct your path. What did Brother Ricky just say out of the word? Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth, and I'm the life. There ain't no man come to the Father but by me. I told you before, i got to tell you again. There's an unlimited number of ways to get to Jesus. Yeah. People have got to him in a cave and in prison and in car wrecks and in the hospital and, and, all, and in churches and just they've got to Jesus everywhere. But you'll not get to the Lord God Jehovah. You'll not go to heaven without Jesus. Right. It's just that simple. We've got to have yes, the, sir. what is the name? What the world needs is Jesus. Oh, We've got to have him, y'all. Now, I want to talk about, you know, we ought not fear God. Now, the Bible says to fear him, but you know what that fear actually means, translates into worship. Yeah. It's, it's, if you fear something or somebody or you have fear of something, you don't want to be around it. Yeah. I'm afraid to go over there. I, I'm afraid of what will happen. I, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afeared. Mm -hmm. So what he's talking about. If God wants you to fear him in the way some folks think they do, he wouldn't say this right here. Go with me to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to get into some stuff today now. Matthew 7 and 7. God just loves the number 7. You understand? Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Listen, listen to what he said here. The Jesus is talking about the prayer and the golden rule. He said ask. First word out of Jesus' mouth here in, in chapter 7 verse 7 of Matthew. He said ask. And it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. He didn't say it might be opened unto you. He didn't say, oh, well, when I get around to it. You understand? He said, if you'll ask, it'll be given. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, I'll open the door. For, look, verse 8. For everyone that asks receives. He that seeks Fine, and to him that knocks it shall be open. What are we asking for? What are we seeking for? What are we looking for today? What, what's in our heart? You know, the Bible says, if you come in and sup with me, I'll sup with you. If you rest and settle with me, I'll rest and settle with you. If you abide, if I abide in you, if you abide in me and my word abides in you. Ask what you will, and I'll give it to you. Amen. If my word, if the word, remember, is Jesus. If Jesus abides in you, then you'll be asking according to what the word says. Uh -huh. Y'all know my favorite scripture? One of them. I got a bunch of them. First John 5. You know what he say? Let's just go there. Amen. My Lord, pray. Uh, boy, I, man, I, I love the word of God. Yeah. Y'all go to 1 John 5. If we ask anything. Oh, I know it. now. thank you, Lord. But you know what? It's, even though you know a scripture and you got a scripture in your heart, go to the Bible and read the Bible. Look here, 1 John chapter 5. Look now, verse 4. Verse, let's read verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. First of all, do you believe on Jesus? Are you believing in the name of God? Are you born again? Well, if you're born again, you have certain rights and privileges and promises that God said, I'll give you. Yes, yes. He told us he'd give us these things. Yes. He said to ask, seek, find, knock on the door. Keep, be diligent. Be consistent in your giving. Be yes. consistent in your prayer and your praise. We've got to be consistent with God. Do you understand it's not for his benefit. It's for ours and those around us. The Bible says to let your light so shine. Uh -huh. And if you get a light, you don't put a basket on it and try to hide it. Let everybody know. Yeah, you don't have to walk God. around going, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Your walk will tell them. Yeah. The words coming out of your mouth, the way you act, the way you think, the way you respond, they'll know you're a child of the Most High God. Do you understand what I'm saying yeah. today? You don't have to go around saying, I'm a Christian. Verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, or if we pray, remember, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, well, I want to know something. Do you, I, want, I got to ask you, do you know that God hears you? 
Do we know that when we pray according to the will, God hears us? Do we know that? Are we settled in that? Well, if we know that God hears us when we pray according to his will, here's what will happen. Whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we've desired of him. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Do you know when you get saved, the Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. That's everybody. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's all of them. Yep. Whosoever will, let him come to the altar, to the throne, to the blood of Jesus. Lord, save me. Yes. We have confidence that we're born again. Let's have confidence in the word that he answers prayer. Amen. I can't get off of this. I don't want to get off of it. We've got to pray. Yes. We've got to praise. And we've got to worship. Listen at this. <clears throat> we're back in Matthew chapter 7. Let's go to verse 9. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, would he give him a stone? I want to know if your son or your daughter or your brother or relative come to your house and said, I'm hungry. Would you give him a rock? Come on, man. Would you give him some old left? No. Right. You'd go in the kitchen and say, y'all help yourself, or you'd go in there and cook. Yes, sir. Or you'd get somewhere, if you had the provision, you'd get them something yeah. to eat. You just, you just would. If yeah. my sons are still living with me, but the day the time comes and they move out, I've told them before and I'll tell them again. I said, son, long as I've got a place to live, you got one. You, you don't need a key on my house unless you just have one. You ain't got to knock on my door. You just come in my home and eat. That's what God wants us to do. You don't need a key. You just go to God. He wants us to walk right up to this throne. Hebrews said to come boldly to the throne. Amen. Do you understand they couldn't do that in the Old Testament? They couldn't. All but now. So we got, we got a mediator. We got somebody. We've got God up here and we've got Jesus right here. And then we're right here. And guess what Jesus did? Jesus put us right up here with him. He said, I made you with me. Do you understand what the Bible says? The Bible says that we are heirs and joint heirs. Now, to be an heir of one, Brother Ricky talked about that a minute ago. See, if you're an heir of something, you just get a part of it. Uh -huh. If you're joint heirs, you get equal. Right. Do, you un oh my, do you understand what Jesus is saying? He said, I made you equal with me. Yes. If you're a joint heir, if me and Brother Ricky, we had the same mom and daddy, and they passed and left the house, and they said, I want you all to be joint heirs, that means everything in that house, that property, everything belongs to us. Half of it's mine, half of it's his, right down to the last penny. Yes. Jesus said, I have made you a joint heir. Glory to God. Then if you're a joint heir, don't you have a right and a privilege to go get those promises? Yes, Come on. I ain't done. Look at here. Verse 10, or if he asks a fish, would he give him a serpent? Now he's talking about the, the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, because here's what he says in verse 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good oh, gifts to... Oh, wait a minute. You can't have that till you get to last this verse. You can't have any of that till you get the last two words. Let me read it again. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that... Same thing. Glory to God. Ask him. Yes. Ask him. Find out what's going on. Listen, I've told you before. I've got, see, this is just still on me. We, I can't get past this because we ain't got it. When we get this, we'll move on. You understand? Oh, yes. on. You What's going on in your life? Write it down. The, the, the things that's bothering you and that's worrying you, take it to the throne and leave it there. You understand? When you leave it there and you walk off, do you have a little fear and trembling? Is there still some worry? You ain't left it there. Come on. You've left part of it there. If you go to the throne and you leave this old junk there, well, Jesus said, cast your care upon me, because I care for you, that's what he said, right? Uh -huh. If you do that, when you get up, you know what? You'll go, <sighs> Whoo! boy, I feel good. Glory, hallelujah. I've left it at the throne. Do you understand? Yeah, it's still around, but it, it don't have me anymore. Right. I have it. I'm on top of it. Yeah. And Jesus has me. And I'll walk in the glory of the Lord God most high. I will praise and worship God because he said so. Amen. He said to ask, Lord, I'm healed. Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2.27 or 2.23. Read 1 Peter in the chap second chapter. 
By his, in, in the Old Testament, said by his stripes he was healed. In Second Peter, First Peter, he said by his stripes ye were healed. Heard a preacher say one time, he said, "I are healed." Yeah. You are healed. Oh, I don't feel like it. I don't. It, 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 it didn't say how you feel. It didn't say anything about how you feel. Our job is to believe. Our job is to go to the throne of God yes, and leave it there. Yes, sir. Amen. That's our job. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Verse 12, therefore, I had some other stuff, but I probably ain't going to get off of this, and that's okay. Listen to this chapter. We're still in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Therefore, all things. What? That's a golden rule. This is very important. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Summed up the whole Bible. Summed up the whole life of Christ. He said, whatever you want people to do to you, and, you're, you know, and we're talking about somebody in their right mind. You understand? I don't want nobody to come harm me and mine or take from me. Or, or I want people to help me and pray for me and be my friend and, and let's fellowship in the Lord. That's what I want. Amen. And it didn't say if they, now the Bible says clearly, if they don't do that to you, you're still supposed to do that to them. That's the Bible right. says to right. don't render evil for evil. Right. Render good for evil. Yeah, but you don't know what they said. Doesn't matter. You don't know what they did. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right. That's right. Leave it at the throne. Lord, I forgive them. I'm, you say you can't do that. You can do that. Yeah. I'm living proof, living witnesses. My wife is, my, some of my family. There's people here in this place. We're living proof you can do that. And when yeah. you do that, again, I've got to do this. Watch me very carefully. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you what, dude, if, if you want to help that person that's done something to you, if you'll keep on in, the, in living in forgiveness with that person, the Holy Ghost will bring down the spirit of conviction on them. I'm going to tell you, they'll get to a point they'll either have to run, hop, skip, or jump, or the best thing they'll do is they'll go to God and they say, Lord, I can't live like this anymore. That's what we're after. Yep. Get born again. Yeah. Throw all that stuff down. Rise up and live the way God intended for us to live. You know, he intended for us to live like they lived in the Garden of Eden. They walked, and I don't mean this bad, but they walked around naked because they wasn't ashamed because they didn't need clothes. Right. The, they was wrapped up in the glory of God. Bible says he walked in the garden cool of the day. Adam, he said, Adam, where are you? He knew where Adam was. Adam said, I'm over here. What are you doing over there? Hey, well, I was naked. Who told you you was naked? Yeah. That's, That's what the right. word said. Who told you that? Uh -huh. I got a question for you today. Who's telling you that you're poor? Yeah. Who's telling you that you you, you got to have you got to take a pill for depression? Come on. Who's telling you that? Who are you listening to today? Uh -huh. Come on. As for me and my house, we serve the Lord. I don't take that stuff. Let, let me. I told you how to break depression. This breaks depression. I'm a, when you rise up and stick your hands in the air and you say, Father God, I love you. I praise you and magnify your holy name. Oh, yes. You're God and there's none like you. You're King of kings and Lord of lords. The devil's been defeated. I'm a born again child of the most high God. Do you understand what I'm telling you? That beats depression every time. How can you be depressed and rise up and worship at the same time? You can't do it. Do you understand? you either going to be depressed are you going to be happy? Amen. If, you're, right. if, you're not, if you're in a situation that you don't like to be in, we need to be active. You're in a situation you don't like to be in, get yourself ready. Go to God first. Lord, what do I do to get out of this? Uh -huh. Do I need to give something? Do I need to throw something away? Do I, is there something in my life that I need to get forgiveness for? Uh -huh. Is there somebody that I have not forgiven? Y'all listen to me now. I'm trying to help you. Yeah, come on. If you'll do these things, you will see. You, you won't even remember. You'll wake up one day and you know what? I don't remember when. <laughs> you understand? I don't remember when I felt oh, that over there. Yeah. I feel so much better today. Yeah, it's because of the word of God. Yes, sir. Right. It's because, see, and we have a choice. Bible says, what did Jesus say? I set before you. Death and life, life and death, cursing and blessing, blessing and cursing. It's a multiple choice thing. And then he told us what to pick. He said, I give you life and death. Choose life. Yes, glory to God. 
What are you choosing today? Choose life. Why not? Oh, I've lived this way for so long, I don't know how to get out of it. I'm telling you how to get out of it. Yes, come on, Fall down on your knees yeah. and call up on the name yeah. of the Lord oh, Jesus, save me. Thank you, yes. I told you, some of my best prayers have started out with two words, Lord, help. Yeah. Come on. And then I don't know what else to say after that because I'm just dumbfounded. Lord, help. Yeah. He's waiting on you. He's got his arm. You know, that's why he died on the cross like this. He said, come. I don't care what you look like. I don't care how you smell. Come on, Lord of God. I don't care where you've been wallowing. It don't matter what you've been thinking or doing or how you've been acting. Amen. Yes, come. come unto me, all you that are heavy and laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's what the Word says. Yes. We're either going to follow the Word or we're not going to follow the Word. I told you before, I tell you again, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Yeah. It's that word that satisfies. It's that word that heals. It's that word that delivers. It's that word that sets free. What the world needs is Jesus. Do you understand? Now, Shantae's about to come on. She's going to sing that gospel music, I told you. Listen, praise and worship God. It don't matter who's around. They can get with you or they can get away from you. Turn yourself loose. Lord, I surrender. Yes. Lord, I'm done, finished too, living the way I used to live. I don't want to live that way. I call upon the name of Jesus. Lord, Save me. Yeah. Lord, help. <laughs> now, worship with Shantae because the song she's about to sing is going to speak to your heart and it'll save souls, change lives, and restore families. Guys, I love y'all. Praise God. As I was walking down the street one day, a man came up to me and asked me what the time was that was on my watch. And I said, does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? If so, I can't imagine why We've all got time enough to cry And I was walking down the street one day When a pretty lady looked at me And said her diamond watch had stopped cold dead And I said, does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? If so, I can't imagine why. We've all got time enough to cry. And I was walking down the street one day. Being pushed and shoved by people trying to beat the clock Oh, oh I just don't know I just don't know And I said, does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? So I can't imagine why We've all got time enough to cry, yeah, yeah. Does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? So I can't imagine why. We've all got time enough to cry. Hey, man, thank you, Sister Shantae, for that 
for that song. We appreciate it. We appreciate all of our singers. I appreciate everybody that's come here today that's in the that's in the studio with us. We've got several here in the studio. I appreciate you for coming, and, and I just appreciate Brother Larry. He brings us the Word of God. Brother Ricky, he brings us the Word of God. All them singers, they sing. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be a born-again child of God. Hallelujah. I'm serving a risen Savior. He's not dead. He's alive. And I've got that joy that he puts right down in you. Did you know that we have the Bible says that there's pleasure in sin for a season? Hello? But Jesus said, I'll give you some joy that's unspeakable, some joy. He said, I'll pour a blessing out upon you that you cannot obtain. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have that joy anytime is to have the pleasure that this old world can give you. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be serving a born, I'm glad to be serving a risen Savior. A God that's able to help me, a God that's able to, that not only able to help me, but he knows what I need. He knows right where I'm at in my life, and he knows the things that's going on in my life. I'm glad today that I'm serving that God that is able today to help me. Praise be unto the Lamb of God. I'm glad to be a child of God today. If you got your Bibles, and I know you do, <laughs> I know you do. Turn to uh, turn to Mark chapter one. Mark chapter one, and I want to start reading in verse fourteen, and we'll cover a little bit more of it. But I want to start reading in verse fourteen. Saint Mark chapter one. I'm gonna start reading in verse fourteen. The Bible says, "And now after John." was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. In other words, I'm here, folks. Yeah, come on, brother. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee and he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. Yeah, and straightway they forsook their nets and they followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, uh, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother who was also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the, in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Mm, and they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue, and he taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. In other words, they were amazed and just couldn't believe it. For he taught with them, he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. I don't know about you, but the Bible says that Jesus has all authority. God gave Jesus Christ all the authority. He gave him the authority, the all power in the world. He got all power here and there. And my friend, that's who I'm serving. I'm serving the one that's got the power. I'm serving the one that's got the power over the devil. It don't matter what I'm going through. It don't matter what problem I'm having. It doesn't matter how the devil comes against me, my friend, but I'm here to tell you today that my God the God that I'm serving can overcome any obstacle anything that the devil can put upon you my friend all we got to do is we just need to learn and we need to believe and we need to just learn to just put it all into God's hands and just let God be God in our life just let the Lord God Almighty help us let God be the one that can help us let God be the one that can go with us and go with us through all the problems and all the troubles my friend I realize the day that we live in a troublesome world. I realize the day that we live in a world, amen, that there's trouble on this side, trouble on that side. But my friend, I'm talking about a Lord God Almighty that's able to reach down and touch you. I'm talking about a God right now that's able to touch you and help you no matter what you're going through, no matter what the devil's putting on you. My friend, you do not have to take it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Christ today. 
Amen. I'm talking about Jesus, the one that knows right where we're at today. He knows right what we need. You see, God had just stamped his approval on Jesus. If you go right on back up there just a little bit, I'll, I'll start in, in, verse, uh, in verse 18. In verse 8, John the Baptist was in the wilderness of baptizing. John the Baptist said, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall, but, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. In other words, he said, there's one coming after me. John came to preach. See, you see, John was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He came to preach Jesus to him, and he was baptizing him in water. But he said, there's one that's coming after me whose shoes that I'm not even worthy to loosen. He said, he's going to baptize you in the water. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost, and he's going to baptize you in the fire. My friend, I'm talking about you can get a hold of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God, amen. And whenever we get a hold of the Holy Ghost and we get a hold of the fire of God, my friend, the devil cannot come against you. Hallelujah! I'm talking about whipping the devil down, amen. There's too many Christians want to walk around. Too many folks walking around today and the devil's got them whipped down. And they, oh, you can't do this and you can't serve God. You can't let that go. You can't let this go. You can't serve God. You can't do all of these things. My, my friend, I got good news for you. God said, this is my beloved son. This is my, Sister Holly said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to what he said. He said over there in Matthew chapter 4, he said right in, 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 chap, in Matthew chapter 3, right at the end of the verse, he's there right there in, uh, around 16 and 17, listen to what he said. He said, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him and a low a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased with glory to thy and you know what Brother Larry was just telling us a few minutes ago that, uh, that, that Jesus has gave us that same sonship. Jesus has, gave, we, we, Jesus has put us right up there with us. And if he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, my friend, you better believe that God is well pleased in you. My friend, what we need to do is we need to realize the power of God and we need to realize that we got the power over the devil. Hallelujah. You see, we want, to walk, we, I, we, we want to walk around, Brother Larry, and we want to walk around with our lips all hung down, almost a stepping on our lip. We want to walk around, oh, this hurts, and that hurts, and I got this problem, and this problem, and this is going on in my life. They just don't like me. They're just picking on me, and this is happening, and that's a happening. Instead of realizing the power of God, instead of realizing that we got the power over the devil, and tell the devil, devil, you take your hands off in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. You know what? Glory to God. I want to serve notice on the devil right now. He got to take his hands off of my family. Amen. He don't have no business. Sister, oh, he don't have no business in our family. He got to take his hand off of my family. Amen. Right now in the, how you know he's going to do it, Brother Ronnie? Because Jesus said, ask what you will and it shall be. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, he said, ask what you will and it shall be done. Hallelujah. And just in case you hadn't noticed, that shall is a positive statement. It will be done. There, there, there are no maybes about it. It will be done. Hallelujah. We just want to, we walk around and let the devil beat us up. Let the devil deceive us. Let the devil into thinking that we got this going on and we got that going on. We always walking around letting the devil deceive us whenever we need to realize we got the power. Hallelujah, in Jesus Christ. i tell you what, we got the power in Jesus if we would just realize and, and understand that we got the power that we can tell the devil that he must take his hand. You know what? Tell the devil to take his hands off your family. Yeah, 
Tell the devil to take his hands off of your friends. Tell the devil to take his hands off of your life. And the devil, you can't have my life no more. I claim it for Jesus today. Hallelujah. Now, now to let you know, now to let you know what how how the devil let to let you know how the devil is going to come against you is he didn't even let the devil didn't even let Jesus by you see he thought but the first, the Bible says that right after God said in that voice right after the voice from heaven comes saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased the Bible says that immediately immediately. He was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now listen what the devil said to Jesus. We're talking about the son of God. We're talking about Jesus Christ. The devil says to the, the devil says to Jesus, he said, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, what do you mean, if thou be the Son of God? He's talking to the Son of God. He's not, but you know what? The devil never gives up. He's always trying to make you think it's not what it should be. It's not what it is. It's something else. If thou be the Son of God, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Jesus said it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil, as you see, he didn't quit there. He didn't stop right there. Then the devil taketh him into a holy city, up, up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Now listen. The devil is giving, quoting the word of God to him right here. You see, the devil knows the word of God just like you do. Amen. And he'll quote the word of God to you. He'll give you the word of God if he can just change it around a little bit. If he can just get you to come on over this way and get you to ease on over this way, the devil will quote that word because he knows it probably better than you do. The devil, Satan, said, for it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands shall, shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. In other words, does it not say in the Bible that God will take care of you? The devil will use that, does it not? It is written that the Bible, that, that God said he's so go ahead and cast yourself down. Go ahead and cast it because God will take care. And you know what? God would take care of him and God will take care. But my friend, let me tell you something. Whenever you accept Jesus in your heart, whenever you get let Jesus be Lord and Lord of your heart, when you let Jesus be God, then you obey what thus saith the word of God. You obey what God says. You don't obey the devil. Hallelujah. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give His angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again. Huh? Ain't but one way to make that old devil tuck his tail. And that's when you can quote the word of God back to him. But you know what? You've got to know that word to be able to quote it back to him. Amen. You've got to know the word. You've got to get in that book. You've got to get in that Bible. And, and Brother Larry said you better know it. And you better know it if you're going to mess with the devil. Amen. Because we're no match for the devil. You cannot handle that devil by yourself. You cannot handle Satan. But it's going to take Jesus. It's going to take the son of the living God. It's going to take more power than what we can muster up. But my friend, with the power of Jesus Christ, with the Holy Ghost power, we can overcome every obstacle of the devil. Hallelujah. Glory to, Glory to God. Ooh, I'm having fun. I just love to preach about the devil. I, I just love to put him on the run. Amen. I love to watch him tuck his tail and run. Amen. Because when we can quote the word of God to him, when we can give the devil the word of God, he must flee. In the name of he can't stay in the same room with Jesus. 
Amen. Let me tell you, you, you want to know how to get rid of the devil? You want to know how to get rid of the devil? Let me tell you how to get rid of the devil. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Just get filled up with Jesus. Get so full that you just run up. You know how the, uh, the how the prophet Jeremiah said it's like fire that shut up in my bones. It is. It is like fire that you begin to read the Word of God and you begin to meditate and you begin to study God's Word and it just starts getting like fire that shut up in them bones. It just starts getting to want to come out of there. I and mean, that old, that old Holy Ghost just gets wanting to come on out and come on out. It's like fire that shut up in them bones and it's got to come out and you know what the devil must go he got to flee he got to go he can't stay in the same room with him hallelujah glory praise the Lord praise the Lord brother Elrod you ready to finish it up glory to God brother Elrod I'll be up here in a minute he going to finish it up glory to God hallelujah he always comes and finishes it up don't he brother Larry yes, sir. Hey man, we appreciate Brother Elrod coming in with us. Listen. He said, and Jesus said unto him, it is written again. Well, <laughs> See, he's quoting the word of God to him too. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Uh -oh. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, All these things will I give thee. Yep. Devil ever told you? Devil ever told you he'll give you this or he'll give you that or you'll get, oh, if you'll just do this, you'll get this. If you'll just do that, you'll just get that. Devil ever told you that? Yeah, I'm sure he's told me that a lot of times. He, he told me that a lot of times. Yeah. Amen. Before I got Jesus. Amen. But when I got Jesus, you see, the devil couldn't tell me. The devil couldn't tell me nothing else after I got Jesus. Because Jesus Christ was the Lord of my life. Amen. And when he start trying to tell me, whenever he start trying to tell me how to live or tell, oh, this is all right. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead. And do, you know what? That little Holy Ghost is in there. The Holy Ghost is right there on the end and the Holy Ghost is saying you know you shouldn't have said that. You know you shouldn't have said that. You know you shouldn't do that. You know that's wrong. You see that, that, that little thing that's in there inside that little thing that's telling you no, no. That's wrong. You're not supposed to do that. And then you got this little imp sitting here on your shoulder. He's going yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Come on, do it, do it, do it, do it, you can do it, you can do it. And the Holy Ghost has got that little steel, small boy sitting there saying, it's wrong. You know what I'm talking about. You've been there. Amen. Friend, I'm going to tell you, Jesus is Lord of Lord, and he's King of Kings. He's the one that's going to help us. He's the one that's going to help you overcome the devil. He's the one that's going to help you. Even if you're a Christian, Jesus said, I give you life, and I give it to you more abundant. I don't know about you, but I want life, and I've got life. I've got that life everlasting that Jesus said he's going. But you know what? He said he'd give us a little abundant life, too. And he'll give it that little. And I believe that abundant life is this life down here on earth, amen, that whenever he just throws his blessings out on you, whenever he just pours one of them blessings out on you that you just can't obtain. And then you know you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes when God just pours them blessings out on you, like, whoa, yeah, glory to God. I worship the Lord God Almighty. He's the one. He's Lord of Lords. He's King of Kings. Friend, let me tell you something. Jesus is coming back. Yeah, he is. Amen. He's coming back, and he's coming back after a church. He's coming back after a people. Amen. He's coming back after somebody that's watching and waiting. They're looking for him. You see, he's not coming back as a thief to the church. Amen. The Bible says he's coming back as a thief in the night. He's not coming back as a thief to you if you're a born-again child of God. He's coming back. Amen. He, you're going to be looking for him. And if you're a born-again child of God, you're looking for Jesus to come back. And my friend, when he steps out on that cloud, I don't know about you, but I'm on my way to heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. If I had time, I'd just tell you what heaven to be like, but I just don't have time to. Listen to me, friend. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I urge you somewhere, somehow, you find you enough to you get Jesus on the inside of your life because it's going to take Jesus today. 
Hallelujah. We got to have Jesus. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, he's your personal Savior. Find you an altar. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. And until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. And what the world.